Belinda de Broquer was born in 1964 in Ghent, where she still lives, a fantastic uh, ancient city with amazing churches, altarpieces, um, fantastic art, along with Bruges, uh, the center of a kind of northern uh, Renaissance art, Flemish art. Les deux behind me, uh, two horses are in this weird coupling, somewhat erotic, but also somewhat sinister. Uh, they're cast from actual horses, like all of her horse works. Uh, she chooses them, uh, and then she's informed when they die, what they must die a natural death. Um, and she chooses these horses for their shapes, and when they die, as soon as they die, she's summoned by the various people that oversee these horses, and she casts them very carefully. So there's uh, kinds of... Um, mutilations or you'll notice that the faces uh, are not there we have horse heads but there are no faces so there's slight deformations slight deviations from the actual anatomy it's important to note that Berlin is the daughter of a butcher and uh, knows anatomy animal anatomy really really well also in this room are two fantastic new works made for this exhibition um, which hang from the wall fantastic wax works which suggests uh, uh, crucifixion, actually. The crucifixion is at the center of her work in many ways because her uh, art has been inspired by art history, uh, very consummate uh, sort of uh, knowledge of art history, but especially that most important emblem of human suffering, um, the crucifixion. Dozens of layers of pigmented wax fill these molds. So, what you have in the mold is actually the very first layer is the first layer that's applied. She does in many ways what the, the opposite of what a painter does as opposed to building uh, from, the, from the bottom up. She builds uh, from the top down. In the second smaller room of this uh, small uh, solo exhibition uh, that we've produced at DHC, uh, we have two cabinet works. Uh, Berlin has produced a number, a series of works in uh, sort of displayed in vitrines or large uh, kind of furniture elements. So these are large cabinet pieces where you would normally display books or objects, almost like uh, surrealist cabinets of curiosities. In a very large work called 0 0.28 uh, from 2007, you have uh, improbably this massive forest, these trunks of trees that were cast in wax and resin and reinforced uh, fantastic trees with all of the kind of organic processes visible on the outside and all of the textures. So with all of the marks and scars of time uh, of, of the natural world, they rise above uh, a, a first shelf which consists of a series of blankets laid one on top of the other, which is uh, full of warmth and a suggestion of shelter so these two materials contrast very, very vividly, but work beautifully, I, I think. In another work called 20, also from 2007, you have two figures in there in this, again, a very odd coupling. It's difficult to say whether they're uh, in the throes of sexuality or in the throes of death or aggression or horror. Uh, and I would suggest maybe a bit of both. One of the figures is human very clearly, and the other is very clearly not human, possibly animal. Again, they're headless uh, figures uh, with very disturbing um, skin-like textures. They're very, uh, very beautifully rendered through uh, Berlin's meticulous technique of um, dozens of applications of wax, pigmented wax, into molds. I hope you get a chance to see this uh, fantastic exhibition, which is running concurrently with another important figurative artist from the United States, John Curran. Uh, figuration appears in both of these exhibitions. Uh, Berlin de Broquer uh, expands the parameters of her discipline, uh, figurative sculpture, uh, by engaging in a very interesting conversation with the history of sculpture, the history of figurative sculpture, the history of Christian iconography. Uh, it's a really powerful exhibition by a fairly little-known artist in North America who is gaining a massive reputation in Europe and hopefully uh, a reputation elsewhere in the world. Thank you.